and grace me to deliver your word to your people. I thank you that your word will renew our mind, renew our thinking, and I pray your word will revive us and bring us closer to you, Lord God, for we know that all we need is in you, Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's so good to see you all here this morning. And I know God's got something special for us. And um, God is so good. Amen. He is good. All the time, God is good. Well, this morning, I uh, want to speak to you about following and leading. I want you to ask yourself, am I a leader or am I a follower? Now, if you are a leader, who are you leading and where are you leading them to? And if you are a follower, who are you following and why are you following them? Now, I don't want you to think that one is better than the other. They are both good and they both are equally important. And you might say to me, I'm not following, and I'm not leading. (laughs) Well, hopefully, by the time I'm done with this, you'll be motivated to follow and motivated to lead. You see, there's a time to lead, and there's a time to follow. Both should be a part of our life. But you have to know when to follow, and you have to know when to lead. Now, if you're young or younger in the Lord, you might be doing more following than leading. And if you're older or older in the Lord, you might be, do, be doing more leading than following. Now, when I was young, as you were young at one time, I was following my father. My father was a master carpenter. So he showed me the trade. I always hung around him and enjoyed being with him. And it was kind of like, as soon as I could hold a hammer, my dad was showing how to pound nails. (laughs) So my father showed my two brothers also the trade. And when it came time to build an addition on the back of our house, which was 16 feet by 30 feet, um, my dad was leading and we were following. We were following his instructions. Now, ladies, when you were young and following your mother in the kitchen, she showed you how to cook. Well, hopefully she showed you how to cook. (laughs) And later in life, when you had a daughter, you probably showed her how to cook. But there is a process of following and leading. You know, even at this point in my life, I am still following Following is still a part of my life. Following God's instruction. Following God's word. I still need to be taught. I'm following the Lord, following his word, so I can lead effectively. You know, we can't come to the place in our life where we say, gee, I I know it all. I don't need to to listen to anyone anymore. You you never want to come to that place because it's not going to go too well for you. You should always be following the Lord, following his word, spending time in his word so you can lead effectively as a Christian. As Christians, we want to be good, godly, righteous leaders. We want to be an example to our children. We want to be an example to our neighbors. We want to be an example to the people around us. Following Christ so we can lead others to this abundant Christian life. You know, I'm going to take what word God speaks to me and lead with it. We need God's word. We need God's grace in order to lead effectively. When I ask you who you are following, your answer should be Christ. I'm following Christ and his word. That that should be your answer. Who are you following? You're following Christ. Who you followed And what they taught you, what you learned, made you what you are today. Think about it. It made you who you are today. 
You know, when I came to Christ, when you came to Christ, we had to unlearn some things. You know, we were used to living in the world and, and uh, living as they lived. But when we came to Christ, we had to unlearn some things. We had to renew our, our mind uh, with his word. And we, are, we were transformed when we came to Christ. If you're going to be a strong leader, which a Christian, a disciple of the Lord should be, then you have to follow a strong leader. And that strong leader is Jesus Christ. Following Christ, following his word, so we can lead effectively. Do you want to lead effectively? So then we have to follow Christ. It takes Christ and his word. Who you follow, who you pursue, you will become. If you follow Christ, I believe we will not lack anything necessary for God's will to be accomplished in our life. Do you believe that? I believe that. If you follow Christ, I believe we will not lack anything necessary for his will to be accomplished in our life. So it's important to stay close to him and stay on the path of life. Are you listening this morning? Like I said, what you follow, who you follow, what you pursue, you, who you pursue, you will become. Now, did the disciples do what Jesus did? Yes. Why? Because they followed him. So this is the process, following Jesus to lead effectively. Jesus made deposits in the disciples. We should be making deposits in the people around us. We should be sowing the word of God. We should be encouraging people around us with the word of God. If you're, you are a young adult parent and have children, your children are following you and you are leading your children. When they are young, they are around you all the time. You're actually their learning world. They will become like you. And as your children become older, they make friends. And I remember as a parent, we try to guide them to the right friends because we know that they will become like their friends. And I remember that when I was young, I was like my friends. And uh, when I came to the Lord, when you came to the Lord, we, we had to make some decisions who we were going to follow, who we were going to be like. Are you listening this morning? Now, when our children become, become young adults, they start making decisions on their own. They start choosing their own friends. They start choosing the path of life they're going to take. Each one of us needs to choose our path. Each one of us needs to decide how we're going to live and who we're going to follow. And uh, when our children start growing up and going their own way, that's when we as parents start praying like crazy. Because we know that, um, well, the decisions they'll make will affect them the rest of their lives. But there is a promise that, I, that I've always held on to as my children were growing up. And you can hang on to this, this promise also. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. It says this, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is a promise. That's something that we know as parents that we raise our children according to the word of God. We got the word of God in, them, in their lives early. We knew how, knew how important it would be. And now that they're old, we know as parents that they will not depart from the word of God. And we're, I mean, this is what's going on in Sunday school, that they're hiding that word in their heart that they would not depart from the truth. Are you listening this morning? Young adults... Let me say this to you. What you pursue, you will become. Who you follow or who you hang around with, you will become like them. They're going to rub off on you. Your friends, the people around you are going to rub off on you, good or bad. You know, and I believe that we need to protect what God has put into our life. I know I need to protect what God has put in my life. So I'm very careful what I listen to who I listen to, where I go, 
what I read, what I watch on TV. Uh, it, it's, there is such a thing as protecting the anointing. There's such a thing as protecting what God has put in your life. I'm not, not going to let anyone steal what God has put into my life. You know, that, that's so important. It took 50 years of God investing into my life. And God didn't labor in vain. He put good things in my life, good ingredients in my life. And it is such a thing as protecting what God has put into your life. There will be times you will lead and say, I'm not going to take that path. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm not going to allow corrupt communication to, to, to come around me. There's been times I've walked away from that. I know there's times you walk for, away from that because we need to protect what God has put us. We're a holy vessel. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we must be careful to what to, to what, you know, is trying to come at us and steal what God has put into our life. We need to protect what God has put into our life. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm not letting that, what God has put in my life, be stolen. We need to protect what God has put in our life. Lead and say, I'm not going to do that. You know, we have the grace. We have the authority. We have the right to 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 say no to temptation. We say have the right to say no to something that we know that's not right for us. We have to be careful. We need to be protective. Are you listening this morning? I want to expound on the following, and this is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 18 to 20. It says this, Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. They were fishermen. <laughs> Here's what Jesus said. He said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. At once they left their nets. I like that part. At once they left their nets and followed him. Here is the key. You got to see this. Jesus said, come, follow me, and I will make you. You see, Jesus wants to take you and make you into a, a vessel that he can use. He says, I will make you. Not the world. I will make you. And, he, he, and, and immediately, they drop their nets. You see, when we come to Christ, we have to immediately drop our nets, drop a, what, our way of life and take on a new way of life. He said, I will make you and shape you. I will teach you. I like the words that the Lord spoke to Moses. He says, I will teach you what to say. You know, and that's what I'm relying on, you know, each time I come. And I, 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 I heard these words from the Lord. I will teach you what to say. I will teach you what to say. I'm depending on that. I will teach you what to say. Think about it for a moment. When you met Jesus, your life changed, didn't it? It changed. He took us a, a, another way. These two brothers, they were fishermen. Well, now, they weren't fishing anymore. They were fishers of men. God was taking them a new way. Amen. Are you listening this morning? Hallelujah. Think about it. I want you to think about this. I always like to give you something to think about. <laughs> when you followed him, all the godly ingredients that he put in you were activated and put into action. When I made a choice to accept Jesus Christ in my life, when you made a choice to, to follow Jesus Christ, all the ingredients that he deposited into your life came to life. They came to life. In his word in Jeremy chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, he said, Before you were conceived, I knew you, called you by name. He called us by name and destined you. You see, 
Before you were conceived, he made a deposit into your life. He, he put anointing into your life. He put giftings into your life. But when you accepted him as Lord and Savior, our spirit was reborn and reunited to God. And all those ingredients that he put into your life, all those giftings that he put into your life were activated. He said, come, follow me. And when you did that, you became alive again. All the giftings, now each of us have different giftings, not one is better than the other, but they're all giftings. And you know, we need, the thing is to, to further the activation, so to speak, is that you have to drop your nets. You have to drop what you are doing and make sure that it lines up what he wants you to do. You see, there's two paths in, in life. There's your path and his path. He wants you to take his path. If you do not take his path, it's not going to go well with you. You're not going to be happy. You're going to be miserable if you don't take the path that God has assigned to each one of us. Each one of us has a purpose. Each one of us has a calling. Each one has ingredients in us to accomplish what God has called us to do. Are you listening this morning? I mean, that... that I don't know if you ever heard that before, but you're hearing it this morning. A lot of this is, is new re revelation as I'm speaking. Are you listening this morning? Praise the Lord. And you know the life of, of <clears throat> Peter, and you know the life of Andrew. They were followers of Jesus Christ. Are you listening this morning? I heard this, and the result was good. Here's how it goes. He said, come, follow me. And I will make you, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I will make you a new creation. Old things will pass away, and behold, all things become new. You know, when we come to Christ, those old things are passed away. I'm not thinking about the wrong that I did in my life. I'm not thinking about my old life. If I don't keep my old life behind me, I cannot go forward and neither can you. You know, old things have been, been passed away. That's what we have to, they died, you know, they died. And we have to, you know, they did die, but you got to get them out of your head. You know, if you, if you keep them in your head, then you can't go forward and serve God effectively. You see, we have to follow him. We can't go back and try to fix the past or, or make up for past mistakes or lost time or things we did wrong. You let God fix that. All you need to do is follow Christ. If you follow Christ, it will go well with you. It will go well with you if you follow him. Are you listening this morning? Praise the Lord. Here's another one. Come. Come. Follow me, and I will make you, according to Romans 8.37, more than a conqueror. If we follow him, he will make us more than a conqueror in each situation. You see, you have to follow him. If you follow him, he will make you more than a conqueror. Are you listening? I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Who said that? Praise the Lord. Here's another one. Come, follow me, and I, according to Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse thing, I will make you the head and not the tail. I will make you above and not beneath, if you follow him. Are you listening? The key is following him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here's another one. Here's another one. Come follow me and I will make you. Are you listening? Again to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. It says this. I will exalt the valley, bring down the mountain, and make the crooked way straight. You keep hearing this. I will make you. I will make the crooked way straight. See? I will exalt the valley. It's going to go well the va for you. The valley will be raised up and the mountains would be made low 
and your pathway will be smooth and straight if you follow him. Now, I know there's going to be times, yes, he lets us go through the valley. There's times that, you know, are tough. But again, if you stick with the Lord, if you follow David's life, you'll see that God brought him through. God will always bring you through. God's always teaching you something. You know, I heard in my spirit this morning, you know, I, I, I have some, some questions. <laughs> and I heard clearly in my spirit, I, I didn't even have a chance to tell my wife. He said, I'm testing you. <laughs> I'm testing you in this new position. I'm testing you. I'm thinking, dear God, I thought all the tests were over. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I passed the test. You know, I, you, you know, really, when you go through some things, you go through the fire, you think, it's over. God, you know, I, you pass the test. It's like in school, you know, like you, you, you know, you study and you work hard and, you know, come testing time, you know, and, you take the test and you pass the test, but next year in school, there's another test. <laughs> so this is another year, another season, we gotta go through another test. Now, if I'm going through a test, you might very well be going through a test too. Well, let me just tell you what this next verse says over here that I looked up. Again, I'm hearing, come follow me, According to Mark chapter 4, verse 35, into the boat, and I will bring you to the other side. Now, I have that hope. I know that God is going to bring me to the other side. You can have that hope that God will bring you to the other side. You see, like I said before, we cannot become complacent. We cannot become comfortable. We can't get into a routine of life because God has another level. God has an, a, another chapter. God has another venture for you. God has something else for you to do. You might have passed the first test. There'll be another test. There'll be something else he'll give you to do. You can't just become complacent and say, oh, I'm done. I thought I was done. I'm not done. You're not done. I don't think we'll ever be done. <laughs> or well done, I should say. <laughs> There's something about the fire of God. It's like he's going to make us well done. You know, like well done, thou good and faithful servant type of well done. That's what we got to look forward to. Are you listening this morning? Are you getting anything out of this? I am too. I always get it first. And then I get it again. And then there's another test. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How about this one? Here's what I hear again. Come follow me and I will, what will he do according to 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 39? I will fight for you and deliver you out of the hand of your enemy. Each one of us has an enemy. I don't know about you, but I'm going to assume but, you know, this devil that's under our feet, he's always lying to us. He's always trying to discourage you and get you to take another path away from God's path. You know, he's, he's always trying to discourage you and try to get you to give up, you know? And, you know, when I hear this stuff, I know it's not God. I know it doesn't line up to his word. And it's like, when I hear that stuff, I know it's not true. He, the devil, is the father of lies. And I remember what God said for me to do. I know what God told me to do. I know what God's word said to do. To do. And it, when I hear a word, it has to line up with the word of God. God always uses his word when he's speaking to us. It should be tangible if not synonymous with God's word. It should always line up with God's word. So when a negative thought, 
when a, a negative idea, when an idea that doesn't line up with God's word and God's plan comes to me, we have to what? Cast it down. And the Lord said he will deliver us from our enemy. And he has delivered us from our enemy. You know, we have to protect what God has put in us. When, you know, God's word lives in us and it lives in us forever. It doesn't die. But the words of the enemy, they die. They fall to the ground. They're beneath our feet. You know, we, we, we don't have to even pay attention. And a lot of times just say, don't bother me, devil. I'm going forward. I'm going to do what God told me to do, no matter what. You know, there is a price to pay to follow the Lord. There is. You know, you've seen what happened to the disciples, the apostles. You've seen what happened. They paid the ultimate price. But, it, but look at what they accomplished. Look where they are today. Are you listening to me this morning? Praise the Lord. Those are just some examples of us, of the results, the good results of following the Lord. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? It's kind of quiet, kind of quiet. Make a little noise. <laughs> now, how about Moses? When he went after God, when he, he was seeking after God, he went up to the mountain, was on the holy ground, and he met God. Look what happened to his life. Would you say that he was transformed? Would you say that the call was activated in his life when he met God? It's like I said, when we come to the Lord, all those ingredients, all those good things, all those, the callings and giftings, they were activated. Well, when he met God, when Moses met God, the call was activated in his life. And God used him to lead two and a half million people out of captivity. Are you listening? How many people will you lead out of captivity? If, it's something we should be doing. We, you know, I don't, I, it doesn't have to be a, a, a two and a half million people. <laughs> that would almost be impossible unless you're someone like Billy Graham or something like that, you know. All the, who knows, there may be another Billy Graham and you might even be sitting here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But again, God used him to deliver two and a half million people out of captivity because why? He sought after the Lord. He went up to that mountain and um, he met God and God activated the giftings and calling in his life. Are you listening this morning? Is this registering? Is it doing something? Okay, good. <laughs> Let's look at David in Psalm 23. David was a follower who became a leader. Are you listening? He was a follower who became a leader. He became king over Israel. In Psalms 23, David says this in verse 2. He said, He leads me besides the quiet waters. Again, the Lord is leading and David was following. This was a process that, that, that was going on in David's life. This should be a process that's going in our life. We are following to lead effectively. In Psalm chapter 23, verse 3, he says this, He guides me. He guides me in paths of righteousness. Again, the Lord is leading and guiding and showing us the way. Again, it's a process of following, a process of following so we can lead effectively. You see, the things that David learned on those back hills, you know, with tending the sheep and spending time with the Lord, he used those skills and what God put in him, he used these skills in leadership. This, the, the ingredients and the, the, the things that the Lord has been teaching us along the way will be used in leadership. It, it, it took time. You know, you just don't, don't start out as a leader. You start out as a follower. 
in, in, and along the way, uh, as in David's life, all these ingredients, the experiences he went through as he listened after the Lord. He's, you know, I mean, David had respect. David had honor. Remember when Saul was persecuting him and, and wanted to kill David? David had honor and respect for God's anointing. And he did not touch the hem of his garden. David had the chance Actually, God put King Saul uh, uh, at hand for David. He could have killed Saul and eliminated all the, the torment that he was going through, just being pursued and hunt, hunted da down. And uh, when, when God brought King Saul into that cave and, and David had a chance to kill him, he did not even touch the hem of his garment. David learned honor as he was following the Lord, as he, he, as he was serving God, he learned honor, you see. And then when it came time for him to take uh, the kingship, when it came time for him down the road to lead, he, he was at a point in his life where he was ready to lead. See, there is a process of following to lead. It just doesn't happen in a, in a week or a, a month or a year. It takes years to, to develop the ingredients you need to lead. I've, I've known the Lord for 50 years. It's taken 50 years to be where I am today. It doesn't start out here. When I came to this church, my wife and I just wanted to start serving we greeted at the door. It was a pleasure to greet the people coming in. How you doing this morning, Charlie? How you doing this morning, Bethany? How you doing this morning, Frida? You know, it's like, I like doing that. I still like doing it. I'll slip out there once in a while. I'll try to catch some of you. You know, I'm going to run back there after service and try to catch some of you and greet you on the way out if I have to. But I enjoyed doing that. Then it came time to usher. I enjoyed ushering. I enjoyed handing out envelopes like George does. I, I enjoyed doing that. Then it came time to, well, there was a head usher position opened. And then, well, okay, you are been an usher for a while. I think you could do the job. So I was head usher for a while. I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed waiting on the people. I enjoyed that. Then it came time, the Lord said, and called us to the uh, children's uh, school uh, administration. So we were administrators for a while. It was fun. There was Frida, Debbie, and others, my wife, myself. We spent time with the children, teaching the children, leading the children in worship and praise. It was a good time. I enjoyed that. It didn't happen overnight. It took years. From there, I went, believe it or not, I went to the music ministry. I couldn't sing. I couldn't sing. But you know what happened? When I responded to the call, God activated a voice that I didn't think, it, when I heard myself through the mic, Ben, I didn't think it was me. It wasn't me. It was just, God just brought that giftings and anointing out because I stepped into a position that God told me to step into. When you step into a position that God has called you into, the ingredients, the giftings, the anointing that God put in you will be activated. I will testify that this morning. Don't be afraid to step into the next position that God has assigned you to. Because when you do, it's a step of faith. Yes, it is. What is faith? It is acting on the word of God. If God says, move into that position, move into that position, he will activate the giftings, the callings, the anointing that he put into your life. So don't be afraid. Fear is not of God. False, appearance, false evidence appearing real. Don't buy into that. Say, I, you could say, I could say too. I've never done this before. But if God says to do it, do it. Step into it. If you, once you step, it's like the boat, you know, like remember, remember uh, Peter, he was in the boat. God said, come to me on the water. And he took that step of faith. And he walked on the water. Now, it's impossible for a human to walk on water. It's impossible to do some things in the natural, but with God, all things are possible. And again, I reiterate, when God tells you to take a step of faith, take it. 
Take it because he will activate the giftings and the ingredients. Everything he put into your life before you were conceived, he knew each one of us. And he will activate what he has put into your life when you take that step of faith. Step out of the boat. Step out of your comfort zone. You know? And, you know, really, I personally, this is a new position. And God has re, is in, the, in, in the business, in the, the realm of repositioning. God is repositioning. He, you know, and, and, and when you're, uh, it's like when I was at GM, 31 years, being a robot, so to speak, <laughs> whatever. You remember John doing the same thing each day. But when it came time to do, learn another job, when it came time to do something different, there was a risk. I had to step out of my comfortable job, my comfortable position, and walk into a position that was different, unknown, un, unventured, um, untried. But, you know, once I stepped into it and started doing it, received some instruction, sure, instruction must come with each position. Just don't think, look, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. No, there's instruction that will come because if we're following the Lord, that instruction is going to come. I have instruction coming daily, instruction coming, what to do, what to say, what to do next, instruction each step of the way because I'm following him and I am allowing him to lead and not me lead, I stand a chance, praise the Lord. Each one of you, we have to step out of our comfort zone, the familiar zone, what we're used to doing. And you know, it's a good thing. You know, um, I've heard it said, change is hard, it, it, it's different. But you know, if you belong to the Lord and you really trust God, you cannot be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and take that new assignment. God has an assignment for each one of us. I, I don't like when I see idleness. I don't like to see dust settling on shoulders. I just don't. Because that means that you've been in one place too long. God is always leading. If he's leading, then we must be following. If he's leading, that means he's moving. Are you listening? If he's leading, he's moving. Are you listening to that? God just doesn't stand still. God doesn't want you to just stand still. Yes, there's a time to rest in the Lord. Yes, yes. A rest is, is not only sleeping, it's, it's trusting. A rest is a trust. I trust you, God. You know, God is in the process of reviving. God is in the process of reviving us. Revive is in the air. Revive is coming back. Revive is coming to our church. In a band and in the spirit. I believe that revive is coming, but there has to be some changes. If we keep still doing the same thing over and over, then we're going to get the same results. I recognize that we need change. I recognize that there has to be change. And the only change that I will endorse or follow through in are, are those plans that God has endorsed and authorized. Are you listening this morning? And just so you know, what I just said for the past, I don't know, 10 minutes or whatever, is not on paper. It was strictly from the throne room of grace. It was strictly the Spirit of the Lord speaking over you and me. Are you listening? That, that, that means a lot to me because it's not me. It, it's him. It's his Spirit speaking to us. Are you listening this morning? Hallelujah. Yes, we're going to go through some valleys. And David talked about that in Psalm tw um, chapter 23, verse 4. He says, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. 
That's what we need to remember. Thou art with me. I hear those words in my spirit. Thou art with me. You know what? Sometimes we need to go through the valley of the shadow of death because some things need to die in each one of us. They do. When we follow him, we drop our nets, we drop our old way of life, we're, we're dropping the way we used to do things, and we're strictly following the Lord and dropping our habits, dropping our old way of life because we are following him. Are you listening this morning? Yes, some things need to die in us. They do. They do. I know some things need to die in me. And when God brings them to the forefront before me, they will die. Because I know if I follow him and follow his instructions, I know that I will be successful for him, for his glory, for his praise, for his honor. Are you listening this morning? We do need to go through the valley of the shadow of death. We do. Because things need to die in our life. And, and, and you know what happens when, when a part of us dies? Another part of him comes alive in our life. Another part of him comes a part, comes a, a part of our life. It does. It does. That old life. You see, there can't be two people living in you. There can't be two gods living in you. You need to, there is only one God, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one God that can, can, can have reverence in this house, in your house. There's only one God. You can't follow the God of this world. You can't follow the God uh, that, that, that uh, of, 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 of um, oh, what do I see? <laughs> of monetary. I, I, you know what? Money doesn't, you know, money is a tool. Yeah. The devil's not going to get me with this money grab thing or anything like that. He is not. Are you listening? There can't be two gods living with you. Just, you got to let only the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of, uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob live in your life. Are you listening this morning? And I'll wrap it up with this. I'm getting the white light. Oh, the light's hurting my eyes. It's the sign to, to slow down and close it. I will do that right now. Praise the Lord. And in Psalm 23, verse 6, here it is. Here it is. Our destination, and, and, and David said it in Psalm 23, verse 6, Goodness, he says, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And our destination for following the Lord Jesus Christ is this. I will, you will live in the house of the Lord forever. Our destination for following the Lord Jesus Christ is to live in the house of the Lord forever, forever, forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you may stand to your feet, please. Hallelujah. So life is a process of following the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can lead effectively. Praise the Lord. Dear Lord, all praise and honor and glory goes to you, Lord God. Thank you for again speaking through me. Thank you, Lord God, that it fell on good ground. And Lord, we recognize that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. For anyone listening this morning, here or social media, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him. You know, even, even the righteous, I, you and I, call upon the name of the Lord and he shall save you from whatever you need to be saved from. I believe that with all my heart. Lord God, we give you honor. We give you glory, Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for having your way this morning, Lord God. And I believe, Lord God, that we'll take this word that we heard this morning and hide it in our heart that we would not sin against thee, Lord God, that we will continue this process of following and leading, leading effectively. And no, Lord, we know.
because we follow you, because we have accepted you as Lord and Savior, Lord God, that, Lord, we know that we will, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. You are dismissed. Enjoy the holiday.